In lesson four, you'll learn about measuring mass, volume, and density. You should have already read your textbook pages corresponding to this lesson and defined all of your terms. And now you should be ready to take notes on the lecture that's coming up next. If not, go ahead and pause the CD, get yourself a pencil, and get your notebook out that you take notes in, and get ready to take notes. Well, first let's talk about mass, and we'll compare mass and weight. Then we'll talk about volume, and then we'll talk about density and how to measure that and calculate density. Now, mass, that's a measure of how much stuff an object contains. That's a good way to think about it, how much material it has in it, how much stuff it contains. Weight, that's a measure of the effect of gravity on an object. For example, you weigh more on the Earth than you do on the moon. That's because there's the effect of gravity is greater on the Earth than on the moon. We'll get more into the concept of weight in Lesson 19. For now, though, just understand that weight has to do with the effect of gravity on an object or on a mass. Whether you're on the moon or on the earth, you still have the same amount of stuff or same amount of material. You just weigh different amounts because the effect of gravity is different. Now, in the SI system, the system international, the basic unit for weight measure is called the Newton. And for mass, the gram, that's the basic SI unit for mass, mass measure. Now, we've been saying that you'd weigh a different amount with, if you were on the Earth or on the Moon. You'd weigh different amounts. But on the Earth, gravity is pretty much the same everywhere, so we use the words weight and mass interchangeably. Now, in America, we still like to use English units for weight sometimes, and so it's good to know a conversion from English to SI units. One Newton, that's equal to 0 0.225 pounds. So you might want to write this equivalent measure here on that table of equivalent measures that I gave you. Here's an example where weight and mass, those units are used interchangeably. Like on a cereal box, they have a weight of 13 ounces. That's English units. Remember, there's 16 ounces in a pound, so that's a little less than a pound. And the metric, or SI units, they have 368 grams. They don't put newtons on there. They don't say how much it weighs in newtons. They have the weight in grams. So on the Earth, mass and weight, we use those words interchangeably because weight, which is the result of the effect of gravity, the gravity is about the same everywhere on the Earth, so you can use weight and mass interchangeably. Now, volume is a measurement of how much space an object takes up. And here are some formulas for calculating volume for a cube, a rectangle, a cylinder, a cone, and a sphere. For a rectangle, assuming all the sides are right angles, you just take the length times the width times the height. Cubes are like rectangles where all the sides are the same length. So you just say S for side because they're all the same, and you say S times S times S or S cubed. Cylinders, cones, and spheres, their volumes are dependent on the radius and sometimes the height. You've probably seen these formulas in your math class. These would be good to memorize. Let's do a practice problem of calculating a volume for a sphere that had a radius of 3 cubic centimeters. The first thing you should do is write down the formula that relates volume of a sphere to its radius. And that would be one of those from that table. Volume is equal to 4 pi times the radius cubed divided by 3. Next, what you should do is substitute the value you've been given, 3 cubic centimeters, into that formula. And of course, that's not a radius of 3 cubic centimeters. It's a radius of 3 centimeters. I didn't mean to write that centimeters cubed up there. But you would substitute that in. Volume is equal to 4 times pi times 3 cubed over 3. And so then you would have 4 times pi times 27 over 3. You could simplify this because 27 over 3, that's just going to equal 9 over 1. 
and then we'll end up with 4 times pi times 9 or 36 pi. Now pi, hopefully you know that that is equal to 3.14. I'm assuming you've done some math problems dealing with circles and circular relationships, so you know that pi is equal to about 3.14. And so on your calculator, you can do 36 times 3.14. And so that's going to equal 113.04 centimeters cubed. Don't forget to write your units. Remember, on these types of problems, the units are just as important as the numerical part. 113.04 cubic centimeters. Now, how would we convert that to milliliters? That's another type of unit that's used, and it's specific for volume. In the SI system, the base unit is a liter, and so then you could have milliliters, centiliters, deciliters, and so on. Look at your table of equivalent measures and see if you can figure out what the relationship is between cubic centimeters and milliliters. And maybe you already know this, that there's one milliliter in one cubic centimeter. So it's like a one-to-one -one relationship. So if you wanted to convert to milliliters, it would just be a matter of changing that unit out because there's no multiplication of numbers. It's just 1 times 113.04, which would still be 113.04 milliliters. So that's a base unit in the SI system for volume is liters. We can also use cubic units of length, but you'll see volumes in both types of units, cubic units of length or in the base unit of liters. Hopefully that will be an easy conversion factor for you to remember since the numerical values are equal. One milliliter equals one cubic centimeter. Well now that you know about mass and you know about volume, we can talk about density. And density, that's the best unit for describing matter. Since matter is defined as anything that takes up space or has volume, and has mass. In chemistry, everything that you do deals with working with different types of matter. So you're always working with something that takes up space and has mass. Density, what that is, is the mass divided by the volume, or some people say the mass per unit volume. In a math formula, you might see this relationship, D equals M divided by V. Density equals mass divided by volume. For example, look at this practice problem. Let's say you had an object that had a mass of 10 grams, a volume of 2 cubic centimeters, and you wanted to know what its density was. Well, all you do is think of that formula, D equals M divided by V, or we can write it like a fraction, M over V. And so that would be equal to 10 grams over 2 centimeters cubed. You can see here that you could simplify the numerical parts. 10 over 2 is just 5 over 1 or 5. And so we can say 5 grams per cubic centimeter. Now the thing that people have a problem with sometimes in working with density is that you have units in the numerator and the denominator. All the unit analysis problems that we did in lesson three, all of those just had a unit in the numerator. Like when we were converting from days to seconds or inches to miles or whatever, we just had one unit that we were dealing with and it was in the numerator. Now you have units in the numerator and the denominator of the fraction. But you work with them just like you do a number. If you had four over three, you would just write that four thirds. In the same way you have grams over cubic centimeters, you just write it g over cm cubed. Anytime though you're dealing with a problem with numbers and units in it, you work the number part separate from the unit part. Like on this problem, we did our numerical part. We did that 10 over 2. We simplified that to 5 over 1 or 5. We did that part separate, and then we looked at our units, grams per cubic centimeter, and then we wrote those down. Look at practice problem C. In this one, we have a rectangular solid there, and then I gave you a mass of 84 grams. I want you to figure out what the density of that rectangular solid is. Well, on this one, you have to calculate 
the volume first. And so you can use one of your volume relationships. Use the one for a rectangular solid, length times width times height, or 7 times 2 times 3. That would just be 6 times 7, or 42 cubic centimeters. So there's your volume for that solid. Now density is equal to mass divided by volume. So we could say density is equal to the mass that I gave you there of 84 grams divided by 42 centimeters cubed. We work the numerical part separate from the units and we see 84 over 42 that would just be 2 and then our units are grams over centimeters cubed. And so there's the answer. So a lot of times you can weigh an object just like with a spring scale or a balance of some kind and then you can calculate its volume by one of the volume equations and then you can figure out its density, mass per unit volume. Now what if you wanted to measure the density of an object that you couldn't figure out its volume by one of those volume equations. It was like an irregularly shaped object like the screwdriver that's sitting on top of this balance. Well you would use the water displacement method to do this. And when you do the water displacement method the first thing that you do is you measure the mass like you can use a digital balance like this one and you can see that that screwdriver weighs 11.54 grams. The next thing you could do is measure its volume because you need the mass and the volume to figure out the density. So like in the picture on the left, you see there's a graduated cylinder sitting there with some water in it. In the picture on the left, the screwdriver is sitting outside the water but you want to make sure that the water level is taller than the object that you're about to place in it so that it will submerge completely underneath it. And you make sure and make a note of what the initial water level is. For example, that was about 76 milliliters. Then you put the screwdriver in the graduated cylinder and you look and see what the new water level is. And the water level will have increased and like for this one it went up to 84. So it went from 76 to 84. It changed by 8 milliliters. Then you could calculate your density, 11.54 grams divided by 8 milliliters. Now something to keep in mind when you're measuring the volume, don't measure it looking down at an angle like in that picture that I have on the right now. When you measure at an angle like looking down or looking up at it, instead of measuring it right at eye level like the other two pictures are, the water level may not look exactly at the right place. So just something to keep in mind anytime you do a measurement is to make that measurement at eye level. Get your eye right in line with the mark that you're trying to measure. Not above it, not below it, but right in line with it. So you use this water displacement method anytime you have a volume that you can't calculate just by using a simple geometric formula. Now let's look at some densities of just some different elements and common substances. Like here's some solids. Just kind of compare the different densities there. Like platinum, that has a density of 21.45 grams per cubic centimeter. Remember, we could also call that grams per milliliter because one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter. So sometimes you might see density units in grams per milliliter or grams per cubic centimeter. Sometimes you might even see them in kilograms per cubic meter. It just depends on the book that you're looking at. Grams per cubic centimeter or grams per milliliter, those are usually the most common way you see the units of density written. And Then look at some of the other ones, like over on the right cardboard, that has a density of about 0.69 grams per cubic centimeter. The sun, that has a density of 1.41 grams per cubic centimeter. Now those are all solids. Here's some liquids and notice water at 3.98 degrees Celsius. That has a density of one gram per milliliter. So if you want to know if something's going to float or if it's going to sink in water, you compare it to the density of water. For example, look at ice. It has a density of 0.92 grams per cubic centimeter. It's less dense than water and we know that ice floats in water so that's because its density is less than 1, 0 0.92. Anything with a density less than 1 will float in water. 
Here's another example. Look at seawater, 1.03 grams per cubic centimeter. It's a little more dense than just pure water. So that means seawater would sink underneath fresh water. And like in a bay or an estuary where fresh water and salt water are mixing together, the saltier water will be below the fresher water. Fresher water will be up at the surface of the estuary. Saltier water will be at the bottom. And then look at the gases. They have very, very small densities. Hydrogen is one of the, or is the least dense substance. 0 0.00009 grams per cubic centimeter. Very light compared to other substances. A lot less dense than water, that's for sure. Density kind of gives you an idea of how tightly packed the different particles are. So the less closely spaced they are, the less packed they are, the less dense that substance will be. Now density, the units of density and values for density, those can be used as a unit multiplier. For example, if I want to do practice problem D here, find the volume of 20 grams of glass well, the first thing I would do is write down what's been given, 20 grams. And I want to figure out how much volume 20 grams of glass would have. Well, I just need to multiply this by the density. And so I'd go to my density table, and I'd find that glass has a density of 2.6 grams per cubic centimeter. And I would write that down, 2.6 grams per cubic centimeter. Now to use density as a unit multiplier, we have to have a numerical value in the numerator and the denominator. So what you can think of this as 2.6 grams over 1 cubic centimeter. That's what we mean when we say grams per cubic centimeter. We mean per 1 cubic centimeter. Now we could also write this 1 cubic centimeter over 2.6. 6 grams. Now which one of those do you think you would use for this problem? 2.6 grams over 1 cubic centimeter or 1 cubic centimeter over 2.6 grams? Well we're trying to convert to volume so we need to cancel the grams. We need that second unit multiplier there. 1 cubic centimeter over 2.6 grams. I didn't need the M on there on grams but Go ahead and cancel the gram units, and you're left with 20 divided by 2.6. That's your numerical part. And you can go ahead and calculate that value. And like I've said before, any problems that we do on these lessons or in your review questions, you can always round them to two decimal places. And so this would round to 7.69 cubic centimeters. Don't forget your units. So that's the volume that 20 grams of glass would occupy. When we're working with density, those units in the numerator and denominator, those are basically equivalent values. We're saying that 2.6 grams of glass equals one cubic centimeter of volume of glass. So we can use density values as unit multipliers to convert from mass to volume or vice versa. Well, that's all for the lecture for Lesson 4. Why don't you go ahead and pause the CD, do your review questions, then turn the CD back on and check your answers. In problem 1, you were supposed to convert 6 pounds to newtons, and you just needed to use that equivalent measure that I gave you, 1 newton equals 0 0.225 pounds. And that's how you go from metric units of weight to English units or vice versa by using that unit multiplier. And so here we wanted to go from English to metric, and so our pounds canceled, and we were left with 2.67 newtons. We just needed one unit multiplier to figure that problem out. In problem two, I just wanted you to calculate the volume of a rectangular block of concrete with those values for its length, width, and height. 
One thing to keep in mind when you're doing multiplication of different values is the order that you do them in doesn't matter. We could do length times width times height or length times height times width. It doesn't matter. We just have to have those three values multiplied by each other. Now, I gave you a height of 100 centimeters, so hopefully you knew to convert that to just one meter. You can't just say four times two times 100. You have to have all the same units, so you had to have one meter instead of 100 centimeters. And then you just do 4 times 2 times 1 is 8 cubic meters. I always like to put a box around my answer so that I can differentiate and know where the answer is in a problem that helps me recognize where the solution is. Now problem 3 I gave you a baseball that has a diameter of 7.2 centimeters and I want you to find its volume in cubic centimeters. Well you had to remember that formula is 4 pi times the radius cubed so you needed to put 3.6 cubed not 7.2. Hopefully you did that you put 3.6 instead of 7.2 and one way you could do this problem is just get your calculator out and do 4 times pi times 3.6 times 3.6 times 3.6. You have to do that like three times. Figure out the numerator part first and that's about 586. If you rounded it up it would be 586 and then divide that by three and you get 195.33 repeating. Remember I want you just to round to two decimal places on these and you get 195.33 cubic centimeters. In problem four, I said if a baseball's mass is 150 grams, what is the baseball's density? Well, you just figured out its volume. Hopefully you are remembering that the volume or the density formula is mass divided by volume. And that's always a good idea to write down a formula anytime you're going to use one. And that just helps you think about where to put your numbers. So the mass is 150 grams. And so you just say 150 g and then over the volume of 195.33 cubic centimeters, I won't write the units right now, that would equal about 0 0.77 grams per cubic centimeter. So that's the volume or the density for a baseball. And those are actually pretty accurate values. I actually measured a baseball. I went and got a caliper. That's an instrument that you use to measure diameters. And I got a diameter of about 7.2 centimeters for a baseball. And I've weighed baseballs before. They weigh about 150 grams. So that's its density. Now, that's a density less than water. So a baseball should float. If we did our calculations right, we would be able to understand that a baseball floats because its density is less than that of water. I mean, you can go try it if you want to. If you have a baseball, go put it in some water and see if our calculations um, line up with what actually happens with a baseball. And so there's our answer for question five, that baseball should float because it's less dense than water. Now in question six and seven, you're supposed to use the density tables from the lecture or if you have some in your textbook, you might have been able to use those as well to solve these problems six and seven. So in problem six, you are going to convert to the volume of an aluminum can that had a mass of 23 grams. Any unit multiplier problem that you do, you write down what's given first, then you multiply by your unit multiplier and you see our grams units cancel here. We found that density of aluminum was 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. Written as a unit multiplier for this problem is 1 cubic centimeter per 2.7 grams, which equals 8.52 cubic centimeters. In problem 7, you were trying to figure out how much 30 liters of helium weighed. And the first thing you needed to do was convert from liters to cubic centimeters. And so there's a thousand milliliters in a liter and then we know that there's one cubic centimeter per milliliter and so our liters and our milliliters cancel and we get thirty thousand cubic centimeters and so then this is kinda like a two-step problem we've got one step done then we need to do another unit multiplier problem based on that thirty thousand cubic centimeters 
And so we found that the density of helium off of one of those tables was 0 0.00018 grams per cubic centimeter. Our cubic centimeters cancel and we get 5.4 grams. 30 liters. That would probably be around 8 gallons. 8 gallons of helium would weigh 5.4 grams. Not very much. And the last problem, that was a review from lesson 3. I wanted you to convert 50 meters squared to centimeters squared. And I used the shortcut method on this one. We know that when we have units of area, we need to multiply by the same unit multiplier two times. And so another way to do that is just to write one unit multiplier and square it. So we're really saying 100 centimeters over one meter times 100 centimeters over one meter. Just like the units meter squared are meters times meters. So our meters squared, those cancel. We're left with centimeters squared and we do 50 times 100 times 100. Don't forget to multiply by 100 twice when you calculate your numerical part of the answer. And so that answer is 500,000 centimeters squared. Now on these problems, you got one point for the numerical part, one point for getting the units right, and then one part or one point if you showed your work. I think that's a very important part of doing these problems is showing your work. So like on problem six, if you just wrote 8.52 centimeters cubed down as your answer, then you should only get two of the three points because I think you need to show your work on these problems and show clearly how you got your answer. That way if you make a mistake, you can check your work. Now I think it's okay also if you do show your work and you get the problem wrong, but you can tell where your mistake was, that you can give yourself a half point back if you can tell what your mistake was. Okay, well that's all for lesson four.